Welcome back, everybody. Let's continue the UX interviews in Silicon Valley, shall we? In the very, very first episode, I have covered all eight types of interview that you might encounter. And in this video, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into two of them, phone screens and background interviews. They just share so much in common that I can't resist putting them together in one video. Well, that also means there's one less thing for you to prepare. Well, but you know, they are fairly easy to understand and master anyway, so don't stress about them. So within each of them, I'm gonna give you some sample questions and then zoom out to let you see the bigger picture. Then point you to some very actionable items. Then you should feel, that's actually pretty easy. Ooh, I got this. But seriously, you've got this because you are a designer, you can totally use your design skills to land your dream design job. Now, let's get into it. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. To me, the biggest difference between a phone screen and a background interview is who you are talking to. For a phone screen, it's typically a recruiter, a general recruiter, sometimes, rarely though, a design recruiter. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes. It goes over less on your background, but more on the hiring process. For example, what is your timeline? Do you have a competing offer? What's your salary expectation? Do you need a visa sponsorship? When can you start, etc, etc, etc. If your recruiter is a design recruiter, they might ask you more background questions and sometimes even ask you to walk through a project on your online portfolio. That had happened to me at Pinterest. For a background interview, it's typically a hiring manager, a designer or design manager. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes. It's more of a conversation to get to know you, your background, of course, what projects you have done, what project you wanted to do, what you're looking for, etc. Well, since we have sorted out the distinctions, let's dive right into the sample questions. So these are the questions that I have got in my interview. So now let's switch the roles. I am the recruiter, I am the design manager, and I'll be asking you these questions. So let's go through them. So the first is about my academic, your academic background. So where do you go to school? What are you studying? What is your program? What projects did you do at school, at your undergrad program and your grad program? So tell me about yourself. You will get this question more often from a recruiter, I would say. And the way I answer this is just what I did at school and what I did for my internships and what I did for my work since I'm working now. Basically a small bio about myself. Sometimes I just have my resume on the side to just help me reference what I have done and just walk through them in a minute or so. Then it's more around the professional background, like the actual work experience I've done in the industry. Where were you last summer? What did you do when you were at Google? What did you do when you were at Waymo? Those are the real questions that I got asked before. What's your current role in the company? What do you do? Who did you work with in this project? So if you gave a sample project that you worked on, I might ask you, who did you work with in this project? Like who are the stakeholders who are involved in the process? What were you up to in the past few years? You get this question mainly because you spoke with them before, which is the same as, what have you been up to since we last spoke? I've got asked both of them before. Have you worked on hardware products before? So this is very domain specific. For that particular role they're hiring, they might be looking for some really specific expertise that they expect the applicant to know. That's why they will ask that, oh, have you worked with computer vision before? Have you worked with body tracking before? Have you worked with Bluetooth before? Have you worked with e-ink before? Things like that. So one example being, what will you change, Flash, after the internships that you had? So just some context here. Flash is a project that I did in my undergrad year. And after Flash, I have had a few internships. That's why these questions came in. So they want to see me reflect on my project to see if there anything that I want to improve from things that I learned from the internships. Because like I said before, design never ends. So you should always have thoughts to improve your existing design or your past projects. Next, what's the hardest part of the project and how you solved it? Just FYI, real quick. If your project is not six weeks, eight weeks, a few months long, you're not gonna go too in depth, involve a lot of people and moving parts, a lot of research to answer this question sufficiently. Because if your project is like a two week long side project or hackathon project, it's not that much hardest part that you can talk about. So maybe time can shrink, but you can use that for an excuse for any kind of projects. That is not the most interesting challenge and constraint for us, because we know time is always a constraint. Next, which project are you most proud of? This is a good question. It really makes you think through all the projects and pick the winner 
how do you approach design problems? So this is the same questions or a different way that they ask, like how do you work? What is your process? Even though the main process is the same, you know, research, idea, prototype, test, but what do you do in the research phase? What do you do in the idea phase? What do you actually do in the prototyping phase? What tool do you use? Who do you talk to in the research phase? Where do you get inspirations? How do you move along? How many times do you iterate? Just keep more details. Then self-awareness. So this kind of overlap with some culture fit questions and also in the professional background questions. I try to separate this section more about yourself as a person, as a designer. So questions like, what are your strengths and weaknesses? I got these questions a few times. Uh, one from DoorDash, if you want to see the whole interview process, link up here, description down below. What do you work on in the upcoming summer? So this is a very common question you will get for an internship, UX interview. So it's good to have a firm answer, but stay flexible. So if out of all the UX disciplines, you have slight interest in, let's say, visual design, and then just say, I want to work on visual design because of A, B, C, and D. Even if visual design is your weakness as your reason, that's also great because you clearly know what you lack and what you want to improve on. That's great. Next, what do you want to work on after you graduate? So this requires you to think ahead. Any challenges that you're interested in taking on during the internships, similar to what you want to work on in the upcoming summer. What do you hope to learn in this internship? What are you looking for in this new role? What do you enjoy in the design process and why? I actually get this a lot from both internships and full-time jobs. Why this company? At least do some research, okay? Do some research about the company that you're applying to. How do you hear about DoorDash? Similar questions. Do you want to work in UI or UX? So this is actually a pretty straightforward question because UI and UX are actually different. Link up here, description down below. But I think when I was interviewing, the question was, what kind of design do you want to work on? They didn't specify UI or UX. So it's kind of hard for me to kind of just jump into it because it's pretty vague. So if you get that question, you can try to ask them to clarify, do you mean UI or UX? So you might want to seek some clarification in terms of what they actually mean. Then skill assessment, very classic. What tool do you use? I tend to just walk through one project and just name all the tools that I use involved in that process. What's your favorite tool? What's your go-to? tool. How good are you with those tools from 0 to 10? In my opinion, that's a terrible question to ask because this is very subjective. So if they ask, try to land yourself on a higher scale. Because if you ask me, how good are you with Photoshop? If I say 1 out of 10, that's a red flag. But I'm actually being honest about how much I know. I know it pretty well, but I don't think I explore all the features and functionality on Photoshop. So that puts me on a 1. But actually, maybe in their mind, it's like a 9. Who knows? So put yourself high in the rank and maybe describe how you use it and what have you used it for. So you give them better sense of what actually you are on the scale. How did you prototype this project? What tool do you use? What's the process? How good are you with JavaScript? So coding related, they will ask specific language uh, question. How much coding experience do you have? And that is it. This is not a conclusive list and it won't be as hiring managers and recruiters can get creative anytime. And they will surprise you in the most creative way. The point here is, of course, you should know all the answers to these questions and take a step back, zoom out, get a feel, get a sense what kind of questions they are and how you as a designer relate to those questions. If you really understand this relationship, you can really easily expand the list and more questions that you think they will ask you in an interview. And you know, this is how you use design thinking to help you land your design dream job. As you know, this is the research. Get some sample questions, that's your data point. Get a feel for what they will ask you, it's research. What's after research? Oh, good job, Casey, that's right. IDA, prototype, test. And that's why, let's go to actions. There are basically three things to do. Number one, of course, is to answer those questions, right? You can take a screenshot of the videos or you can leave a comment and then email me. I can send you a copy of this worksheet. And when you're thinking through those questions, maybe have several multiple variations and then pick the best answers. Once you have your full set of questions, that's your prototype V1. After having a prototype, you can move on to the next phase to test, which is action item number two. Rehearse those questions. I guarantee you most people don't rehearse or don't rehearse enough. So if you do, you're way ahead of them. I understand that you might find rehearsing, ah, so much work. Don't worry, I have a few tricks for you. First one, shoot for Mars land on the moon. So if you really think you're going to rehearse three times, 
aim to rehearse six times. So you end up really rehearsing three times. And second trick, we rehearse five times and then get five guys. I do in and out myself, but just saying, anything works. Number three, record and listen. I personally find it's really useful. Record your rehearsal and then play it back. Listen to yourself. Sometimes you will feel like you don't make sense and then you will feel a little bit guilty and embarrassed, but that's the whole point. That little guilt and embarrassment will push you to rehearse more because you don't want to embarrass yourself. You want to be good, you want to be great, you want to ace the interview, you want to get the job. And that is the energy you want to have. And overall, it never hurts to do more research. When necessary, Google more, YouTube more, watch more video, watch more of my videos. Yeah, that is a shameless plug, but uh, I think I make good content, so keep watching. Find out what questions that your classmate, your, your design peers got asked. Ask them, get more data point. Design is cynical, right? Ooh, the problem that you are solving as a designer here is to find yourself a designer job and internship. So go through the design process, iterate when you need to. Alrighty, do you feel easy peasy, straightforward? Have you got that, I've got this feeling? If not, go through all those questions, answer those, rehearse them five times, listen to yourself, go through them again until you're happy. And then I'm pretty sure you have got this. You have got the background interviews. And here are some related topics I plan to do in future videos. If you have a strong preference of which one you want to see first, simply let me know in the comment section down below. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful, or insightful, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This is still a very small channel, so every like counts and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!